Good morning or good afternoon, everyone, uh, depending on where you are. Um, and welcome to Citations Group's Managing Workplace Disputes webinar. Um, from what I can see, we have a majority of people that have joined. Uh, we're just waiting for a few more. Uh, so if you can please just bear with me for another 30 seconds or so, uh, just wait for the others to join and we will get everything uh, up and running. Okay, that looks like everyone is here. Uh, so again, on behalf of the business, welcome uh, to Citations Group Managing Workplace Disputes. Now, I believe, um, no, sorry, not I believe, I know that managing workplace disputes are one of the many areas um, of businesses that can be tricky to manage at the best of times. A workplace dispute is considered when one or more uh, employees actually don't get along. And I think if there's one thing we can agree on is that at some stage, you're going to have to deal with that uh, in a business. Um, so look, I'm sure throughout the presentation, there are going to be questions, uh, which we would love to answer. We might not be able to get to all of them, but if I encourage you to use the, um, the section to the bottom of the webinar to the right, uh, to just write down your question, uh, and we will hopefully be able to answer them towards the end. So uh, with that in mind, uh, I'll put you, introduce you to your presenters, which I am one of them. So my name is Adam Ali Argij. I am the Senior Business Development Manager here at Citation HR. Uh, and on the left, we have Amelia Adhard, Adhard, which is a Workplace Relations Consultant at, at Citation HR. Um, Amelia is one of our well-respected advisors and I work quite closely with her as well. And we're very, very lucky to have her uh, to present today. So with Citation Group, we're actually now a workplace compliance solution provider, which help companies with challenging parts of their business and to sort of help give peace of mind with all these different areas. So look, we've got areas from Citation Legal, which is workplace law and helping with migration services, uh, to uh, Citation Certification, which is there for all your ISO certification for businesses that might be looking to, you know, um, get bigger tenders or so or as such. Work health and safety, crucial in businesses now to make sure that your workers are protected. Um, we're there to assist with everything from a work health and safety perspective. Enable HR, which is, which is part of the citation group. So that is our fully functioning human resources information system. It actually manages the entire employee life cycle from your pre-employment to your employee management up to termination. And it actually includes a work health and safety section as well, which is very, very valuable to have just in one, in one software. And then and Citation HR, uh, which is here for managing your compliance um, and keeping you above board with all legislation changes um, and, and, and any HR matters that, that might arise. which actually brings us to Citation HR for me to talk a little bit further about. So look, it, it is actually for expert HR services for all businesses as stated there. Uh, look, basically it's there to give businesses peace of mind that all of your HR matters are handled compliantly and efficiently. Um, so how do we do that? Look, firstly, what we like to do is do a full compliance HR audit. Now that's there to review all of your contracts, policies, processes, and procedures. Identify if there's any gaps or or anything that may no longer be in line with legislation, then provide you with a nice report and then actually help you fix up all of those issues as well. Going on, HR doesn't go away after an audit. It's going to be continually an issue. Um, I can see Amelia laughing there, um, meaning that, you know, we do need a 24 hours a day, seven days a week telephone advice line. Look, that does come through to someone with the experience like Amelia, where you can ask questions that could be around bullying, harassment, awards, mental health in the workplace, what we're talking about today, managing workplace disputes. Um, you know, it is an unlimited advice line and they are absolutely brilliant supporting businesses and, and helping advise around areas. That, that they are struggling with. Uh, we provide you with our HR software. Um, as mentioned, it does manage the entire employee life cycle, pre-employment, employee management, all the way up to termination, um, which actually also comes with a full library of resources. Now, the library of resources is 
brilliant. Uh, you know, it, it, it has everything from letters, forms, contracts, um, policies. When I talk about letters as well, it's things like inviting people to a poor performance um, already built into the system. So it is incredible. Um, it is an incredible library of resources there. We are very confident in the advice that we give. So we do provide an advice promise, um, just meaning that if you did follow our advice for say termination um, and some employee decides to lodge an unfair dismissal, we will back you, we will represent you in court um, with no additional fees. And then also we have recently built in our CTC, which is a compliance training center, uh, crucial for businesses now uh, to be making sure that they're doing the correct training with employees and managers. And what the center does, it actually just stops you having to worry about creating the content. It's all there for you. It's all ready to go. So that's Citation HR. So that brings us to today's agenda, uh, which includes real life examples of workplace disputes, how you can avoid making these same mistakes. And then as mentioned, we will answer your questions at the end. Uh, so that's it from me for the time being. Uh, I'm gonna pass over to Amelia now who will take you through the content. Thanks, Amelia. Thanks, Adam, for that introduction. As Adam mentioned, my name is Amelia. I am a workplace relations consultant here at Citation HR. And let's get into the best approach to manage workplace disputes. First, we must understand and learn to identify what a workplace dispute is. So conflict is all too common in Australian businesses. Disputes and complaints can happen at any workplace. According to the Fair Work Ombudsman, a dispute exists when one or more people disagree about something and the matter remains unresolved. Often disputes can be settled quickly and informally in the course of everyday work. However, if people can't agree on a way forward, or if the dispute is about a serious matter, you may, might need a more formal approach. Best practice employers will have simple, fair, confidential and transparent dispute resolution procedures in place. These employers take disputes seriously and address issues quickly and effectively so they don't escalate. In today's recruitment market, keeping and holding on to good staff is of paramount importance. Workplace conflict creates stress, reduces confidence and motivation, and leads to more absenteeism and higher rates of employee turnover. This can be by choice or by dismissal. Every workplace can enjoy the benefits of taking a best practice approach to dispute resolution. These may include a greater employee productivity through increased job satisfaction, improved employee retention, reduced stress from managers and employees, better relationships with employees, reducing the costs that come from resolving disputes externally, such as legal fees associated with dealing with claims made by employees against the employer. So next we're going to get into some real life examples and our first real, real life example is managing a complaint. So two employees, Sam and Josh, have been excluding a new employee, Lara, out of conversations and Lara has raised this with her manager, Kim. The manager then pulls both Sam and Josh aside while working and states they are leaving Lara out and the pair need to, be, need to start being more inclusive. How are we going to avoid the risks in this situation? Let's break it down a little bit. Firstly, we would conduct a wellbeing check-in and discuss the complaint with Lara. If a formal complaint has been raised, conduct an investigation process. Provide an invitation letter to Sam and Josh individually to discuss the allegations. Employers must always offer for a support person to be present if the employee wishes. If an employee mentions halfway through a meeting that they now would like a support person, the meeting must stop and convene once a support person is present. During the respective meetings, allow Sam and Josh to make comment on the allegations. Employers must always allow employees a chance to reply to allegations separately and in a proper forum. If possible, have a third party sit in on the meeting to take notes of the meeting for reference and compliance in the investigation process. Then, based on the information that's available, conclude as to whether the allegations have been substantiated or unsubstantiated. In an investigation, it is key to not assume anything has occurred. The process is always innocent until proven guilty. If necessary, manage any disputes that may arise post-investigation. 
It is important to make sure you keep a record of the investigation. And as Adam mentioned earlier, Citation HR software provides template documents and the perfect place to maintain these records. It certainly does. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to talk to you about managing harassment or discrimination. So if an employee's dispute is serious in nature and it involves bullying and harassment or discrimination, this may lead to either a warning or in some instances, termination. So let's firstly decide, uh, define what bullying is. So a person or group of people repeatedly behaving unreasonably towards another worker or group of workers and the behaviour creates a risk to health and safety. Some examples of, bully of bullying include behaving aggressively towards others, teasing or playing practical jokes, pressuring someone to behave inappropriately, excluding someone from work-related events, unreasonable work demands. Now, unlawful workplace discrimination under the general protections in the Fair Work Act 2009 occurs when an employer takes adverse action against a person who is an employee or prospective employee because of one or more of the following attributes of that person. These include race, colour, sexual, sexual orientation, sex, age, physical or mental disability, marital status, family or carer's responsibilities, pregnancy, religion, political opinion, national extraction, or social origin. Now, under the general protections in the Fair Work Act, there are a number of remedies and penalties for adverse action on discriminatory grounds. Where the Federal Court or Federal Circuit and the Family Court of Australia determines that a person has contravened the discrimination protections under the Fair Work Act, the court may make an order that, consider, that it considers appropriate. And this can include injunctions, reinstatements and or compensation. So up next, we're going to talk about warnings and serious misconduct. And when it comes to defining serious misconduct, it involves an employee deliberately behaving in a way that is inconsistent with continuing their employment. For example, causing serious and imminent risk to the health and safety of another person or to the reputation or profits of the employer's business, theft, fraud, assault, sexual harassment, or refusing to carry out a lawful and reasonable instruction that is part of the job. So if an employee has been engaging in any harassment or bullying of any kind, this needs to be managed immediately as liability falls on the employer. When an employee has acted in a manner consistent with serious misconduct, this may result in instant dismissal. However, we would be careful when enacting terminations for serious misconduct and considering the risks that might be involved. In instances where termination is not an option, we could issue a warning instead. So let's consider another example. And this example is going to focus on heat of the moment resignations. And the facts are gossip has started within a business. The rumor is Tim and Helen are in a relationship. The manager, Simon, pulls Tim and Helen aside and explains to them that they should keep their relationship more secretive as everyone is talking about it. Helen is quite disgruntled and vehemently denies being in a relationship with Tim. After 10 years of employment with the company, Helen decides to resign and the company accepts her resignation effective immediately. I can kind of see some risks there already. Uh, so let's discuss how to avoid the risks in this situation. Firstly, we would not discuss the allegations with Tim and Helen unless it has been substantiated. A relationship between the two is interfering with work or needing to be managed in relation to professionalism. We would advise to manage the employees that are spreading the rumours through discussing professionalism and discussing any relevant company policies and procedures. These are moments where having policies and procedures in place, such as an employee handbook or a code of conduct, comes in handy. Having these can mean when performance management process of, processes are being undertaken, you can link to the signed or agreed policies, which link to professionalism and expectations, which are able to be adhered to in order to avoid a toxic work environment. An employee handbook and a code of conduct are both documents that can be generated through the Citation HR software. Correct. <laughs> 
So in talking about heat of the moment resignations, we should make sure that we understand that an employee who resigns in the heat of the moment when they are angry or upset may not have made a rational decision to terminate their employment and they might regret it. An employer should consider giving the employee the opportunity to retract their resignation after they've had time to calm down. An employer that does not allow an employee to retract a heat of the moment resignation may risk an unfair dismissal or a general protections claim. Hey, Adam, I'll hand back over to you. I believe you have an awesome offer that you want to talk about. Yes, thanks, Amelia. Uh, we certainly do. Look, guys, this must be a really hot topic because I can see a bunch of questions coming through. Um, and as I said, we will get to as many as we can at the end of it. Um, but if you do have questions around managing workplace disputes or anything that's happening in the business, it could be a termination, it could be bullying, it could be managing ill or injured workers. If there is an HR matter that, that is stressing you out, please um, scan the QR code to the right there um, and you can actually book in a workplace compliance consultation. Uh, and for some reason, we're actually going to throw you also into a draw to win a $200 e-gift card. So I'm actually just going to pause here for about 30 seconds um, so and give you time to scan that uh, just so you know there will be one winner and they will be randomly drawn as you can see on Tuesday the 14th of May um, and we'll be informed I'm sorry and we will inform you by email uh, the raffle will close on Monday the 13th of May um, yeah so again I'm just going to pause here guys and I will let you scan the code and book on in Okay, I uh, hopefully that's given you guys uh, enough time. Uh, again, please book that in. Uh, I'm going to hand back to Amelia now to continue with the information around the webinar. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Amelia. Thanks, Adam. That sounds like a great opportunity. I mean, I can tell you I wouldn't mind a $200 e-gift card. <laughs> yeah, I can um, spend them anywhere. So there's heaps of places you can actually spend it. So. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, yeah, I know a few people who would like that. So okay. definitely uh, sign up and do that and take advantage of that opportunity. Um, getting back into it, we'll go to our final real life example. And that is around reasonable business requests. Manager Simon asks his junior colleague Kelly over Teams chat to urgently move her jobs for the day and to focus on the action items in the sales system instead. Kelly notes to Simon that she's a bit stressed by the workload at the moment and Simon messages stating, we'll handle, that, we'll handle all of that along with the stress once the sales replies have all been done. Kelly then speaks to her general manager, noting she'll be heading home as she's overwhelmed with the workload and is stressed therefore unable to continue working for the rest of the day. So let's talk avoiding risks in this situation. I would suggest you call Kelly in for a wellbeing check-in following notes of stress within the workplace. This can be done formally and informally initially. In a world which is much more online now than ever, having wellbeing check-ins to manage stress and workloads are crucial. Best practice would be to have check-ins with employees every so often to make sure the workload isn't too much and they feel heard. The business can also offer the employees access to employee assistant programs or government funded services. Reasonable management action that's carried out in a reasonable way is not bullying. An employer or manager can make decisions about poor performance, take disciplinary action, direct and control the way work is carried, carried out. Management action that isn't carried out in a reasonable way may be considered bullying, noting different managerial style, styles and the way the employee was spoken to. So let's discuss some general tips to managing disputes and how what we should include. Firstly, let's consider consultation and cooperation in the workplace. Consultation means asking for and considering employees' views when making decisions. Cooperation means working together harmoniously to find solutions. Consultation is important during major workplace change. This means change to the business that will affect employees in a significant way. Some examples of this could include different working hours, duties, work locations or redundancies. 
Employees who take a consultative and cooperative approach still have the right to make the final decision and how to manage their business. Employees who have the opportunity to be part of the process are more likely to accept change and are less likely to feel anxious or fearful. Being consulted about important decisions in the workplace can improve an employee's engagement with their work. The next thing we should consider is accepting conflict. Remember that conflict is natural and happens in every ongoing relationship. Since conflict is unavoidable, we must learn to manage it. Be a calming agent. Regardless of whether you are being a sounding board for a colleague or you are dealing with your own conflict, your response to conflict can escalate or decrease the intensity of the problem. To be calming, provide an objective or neutral point of view. Help plan how you are going to work with the other party to achieve the solution. Listen actively. Work through how you and your employees feel. Identify what the specific problem is and the impact it is having on the business. Analyze the conflict. This will help clarify the specific problem. Some questions that you may ask are, what triggered the conflict? How can the conflict be resolved? Model neutral language. When people are in conflict, they use inflammatory language, such as profanities, name calling, and exaggerations that escalate the conflict. It is important to remain calm and use appropriate language. It's also really important to separate the person from the problem. View the problem as a specific behavior or set of circumstances, rather than attributing negative feelings towards the person as a whole. This approach makes the problem more manageable. Work together. This requires that each employee stop placing blame and take ownership of the problem. Make a commitment to work together and listen to each other to solve the conflict. Focus on the future. Often the best way to take ownership of the problem is to recognize that regardless of the past, you need to create a plan to address the present conflict and those that may arise in the future. Be specific. When problem solving, be very specific. Clarify ambiguous terms that each party may interpret differently. Maintain confidentiality. Encourage others who are in conflict to deal directly with that person that they are in conflict with. Avoid the conflict and venting to others tends to avoiding the conflict and venting to others tends to escalate the conflict and fuels the rumor mill. In some situations, it may also be necessary to initiate performance and disciplinary processes to manage workplace disputes. Performance management steps are as follows. Step one, create a performance management plan. Make the plan as detailed as possible, avoiding the use of ambiguous language and note reasonable business expectations relating to policies and procedures. Sometimes you may need to manage with a warning also. Step two, set goals for performance management. With a PIP, within a PIP, with details, examples of how to manage expectations in relation to the dispute if necessary, potentially initiating training on dispute resolution for individuals and businesses as a whole. Step three, build a performance review system. Check-ins are crucial and are very important. We often advise that the minimum period of time for a performance improvement plan is about a four week period. And that means you should probably do a check in with your employees at least once a week. Step four, develop strong feedback giving skills. Make sure the employee also feels heard and not just punish. Step five, ongoing employee performance management. Support the employee ongoing, even beyond the performance improvement plan. Sometimes a formal warning letter is appropriate, and this should sit on the employee's file for future reference. It outlines performance or misconduct concerns and also should provide an action plan of what the employee needs to do to improve. A formal warning should be in the form of a letter to the employee and should include reference to your verbal conversations and warnings and include all key dates, specify details of the areas where your employee is underperforming and always provide examples. Reference the number of the warning letter create an action plan and communicate dates that you plan to check in with your employee. Make it clear that another written warning could be issued or employment could be terminated if expectations are not met. Reassure your employee that warning the warning is confidential. 
It's also best to set up a meeting with the employee to discuss the warning. You should always discuss the specifics of a written warning letter with your employee prior to physically delivering it to them. This allows an opportunity for them to ask questions and clarify any issues or concerns that they may have before they're able to review and receive it in writing. As discussed earlier, adverse actions can include dismissal of an employee, but encompasses a range of other actions, such as prejudicing the employee, injuring the employee in his or her employment, or discriminating against them. Altering the position of an employee to the employee's prejudice, or injuring the employee in his or her employment, is a broad additional category of adverse action but includes situations in which an employee is in a worse position after the employer's acts than before them. As a result, a deterioration has been caused by the employer's intentional acts and the employee has been deprived of one or more immediate practical incidents of employment. Employees are also able to bring adverse action claims on the basis that they allege that they have been discriminated against. For example, where they allege they have been denied a promotion because of their age or dismissed because of their religion. The protection also extends to prospective employees who might allege they have not been offered a job because of, because of a discriminatory reason. Now, adverse action claims can occur when an employer terminates an employee and also when an employee feels as though an unfair process has occurred. The Fair Work Commission has the right to determine the full outcome of the matter in relation to the damages. I'm going to hand back over to Adam now and he'll give you a little bit more information about what we have to offer. Thanks, Amelia. Uh, just to reiterate, guys, um, about the offer of what, we're, what, what we can provide for you here. So as I said, the line is blowing up to the right here uh, with a whole bunch of questions. Uh, I think I've got time or we have time to run through around about six of those. So I do have those written down that I will get to. Uh, however, as mentioned, if we do not get to your question, please scan the QR code to the right. Um, if you've seen anything today that you want to ask any further questions about, if you've got a current issue that isn't even relevant to this webinar, absolutely fine. Please scan that QR code and we will be more than happy to um, set up a workplace compliance consultation. And again, you will actually go into the draw to win a 200 dollar e gift card um, which again the winner will be drawn randomly on tuesday um, the 14th of may and informed via email will be the winner the winner will be informed via email sorry uh, and the raffle will close on monday the 13th of may uh, so again any issue whether it's relevant to this webinar or not please scan the qr code uh, i will get to the questions in a second but i'm just going to give people another 30 seconds uh, so that they can uh, have the opportunity to scan that and we will be back. Alrighty, hopefully that has given everyone enough time. Uh, so on to the next section, please. So we're going to uh, answer your questions now, as mentioned, as well as promised. So let me just pull up the few that I have uh, written down here. And Amelia, I am going to put you on the spot. So I mean, I'm, I'm confident that you're going to be able to handle these anyway. But here we go. Um, so can my employer refuse to attend a meeting to discuss their performance? Employee, sorry, let me start that again. You're the one answering the questions and I'm the one stuffing it up. Um, That's okay. can, can my employee refuse to attend a meeting to discuss their performance? Yeah, that's a really interesting one, um, Adam. And I think in general terms, it's quite difficult to answer just based off that information that you've given me. Um, I, I guess it would depend on the circumstances of, of the meeting and the refusal to attend the meeting. I would encourage the employer to speak to their employee directly and try and understand why. Uh, generally speaking, if it's not regarding safety and there's not a mitigating circumstance that we should be considering, it is a reasonable management direction to uh, require employees to attend meetings and therefore if the employee is going to continue to refuse on 
not an extenuating basis, then it may result in disciplinary action. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Next question. See if I can get this one read out right. Um, <laughs> what if my employee start, starts swearing and yelling at me during a meeting? Yes. So whilst unpleasant, that sounds like it's a very common question that we get here a lot. Um, look, ultimately, inappropriate language is not a you know, you wouldn't allow for it during a meeting and it's it wouldn't be appropriate. I think it's very crucial for business representatives, whether that's a manager, an employee, uh, sorry, a business owner, that you kind of keep your cool and professionalism while someone is acting in that manner. I mean, it's no use if both people are yelling at each other. Sometimes it's good to kind of remind the employee of what the expectations are and how they should be conducting themselves and then give them an opportunity to have a break. Uh, maybe a little pause for them to gather their thoughts, think about how they might be reacting. Um, we'll give them an opportunity to be more cooperative and react in a more appropriate manner moving forward. I think something that is very key and, you know, we have to remember is everyone reacts differently in every situation. Um, you can't, you can't, I guess, hypothesize how someone's going to act. It's going to depend on how they naturally take things. So it, it is natural for sometimes there to be an, an angered reaction or a reaction that involves yelling and swearing. It's just really important to kind of expect it, but know how to work it down. Yeah, that'd be a tough one, having someone yell at you. Absolutely. Um, okay, so we've got time for a few more. Uh, so uh, what if the support person the employee decides to bring starts speaking for them? Actually, I was hoping someone would ask this question because that's a bit of detail I'd love to give. And it's it's something we hear about all the time. Um, most common, it's when you're dealing with younger employees and they've perhaps got their parents there, will speak over them a lot of the time. I think it's, it's really important that we set the expectation of what a support person is there for from the very beginning. So that might mean when you're sending those invite letters out to an investigation meeting or to a meeting about disciplinary action or anything like that, you make sure you include the what the role of the support person is. So specify that the support person is there to support the employee, but won't be speaking on the employee's behalf. It's really key to have that in writing from the beginning. Uh, then if you come into the meeting and the support person is continues to speak over the employee, you kind of have to bring it back in and just remind the support person of what their role is, but also offer for them to also take a break if they want to convene with the employee first. It's really important that, and, and particularly in, in investigations, you're getting your information from the employee directly, not from someone who is speaking on their behalf. Um, you need to understand as an employer how the employee is feeling. Um, and sometimes it can be emotional and that's why other, other individuals will get involved, but it's really important just to step back, take a moment, remind them of their obligations and their role in, in the meeting, and then provide them with an opportunity to convene with the employee privately. And that could just be a short break. Yeah, I wouldn't have even thought to put that in writing. So that's uh, some good information there. Mm, absolutely. Uh, next question. I think we've got time for a couple more. So my worker has walked off site due to a dispute with their manager mm. and has said he is refusing to finish work I sent him. I assume this is his yep. resignation. Yeah, so this is definitely a common misconception. Um, and I think it's very important to automatically, to, to not automatically, I should say, not automatically assume someone's resigned if they've walked off site or out of out of the workplace. Um, I think further investigations is what you need to do. So maybe give the employee a call, wait for when the next shift may be uh, to speak to them about what occurred that day. Maybe there's a reason they walked off that we need to be considering a mitigating circumstance. Um, and in the first instance, the business should reach out and organize the time to meet. Um, sometimes a refusal to work or walking off site doesn't mean a resignation and that really should be confirmed before you assume anything could just be a tantrum yeah um, <laughs> it happens it definitely happens <laughs> it does righto so next question um an employee and their manager don't get along and the employee is asking for a change in reporting line what should i do in that situation 
Yeah. So I guess similarly to the questions that I've previously answered, it all comes down to speaking to the employee and getting to the crux of the issue uh, initially. And we spoke about that in the webinar today. Um, we need to understand why the two workers don't get along. Is it because, you know, they just have uh you know, maybe they don't have the same sort of ways of dealing with things and that's just cultural clashes, things like that, um, but maybe not things that would require them not to actually work together. So let's understand why they're not wanting to work together. Maybe there's bullying, maybe there's a misuse of power that we need to understand that could really attribute to a reason not for them to work together. And then once we've had a bit of an investigation there and understood why the employees don't want to work together, we can look at how we move forward. Um, um, you know, it may be reasonable to change the reporting line, but it's really circumstantial and it would depend on, on that investigation. Okay, awesome. Now, this one I put up looks quite interesting. So I often know what the correct outcome is in the dispute internally, but I'm actually always concerned about putting anything in writing and it coming back to me personally. Yeah. Uh, what are my options here? Yeah, so I guess many business owners have these concerns about uh, implementing disciplinary action, um, even if it may be appropriate, I think, like you said, um, because of the potential risks for the business. I would suggest that you get a second opinion. Uh, this is where our service is great. Um, it, you know, engaging one of our consultants via the advisory line can be a, a great opportunity for even us to be a sounding board. Tell us what your plan is. Tell us what you're thinking of doing and we can have a more um, sometimes level-headed approach to the to the circumstance and give you a really great opinion as to what your risks would be if you went a certain way. Often our advisors can provide you with multiple options depending on the risks the business is willing to take. Yeah, that's one thing I love about you guys when I do listen to you when I'm in the office. You do always provide different avenues. You know, you're trying to work with the client to, I guess, achieve what they're looking to do, but in the right way. Um, so, look, guys, um, thank you, Amelia. Thank you for answering those. That That is all that we do have time for. Um, I, I don't want to harp on it, but if you please remember to, if you have booked in for that um, consultation, they were they're great. Whatever the matter is, we are really looking forward to helping you. Um, again, thank you so much for attending. Um, uh, please keep in touch. Amelia, amazing. Thank you so much for uh, putting that together for everyone today. Um, I learned a lot. Um, hopefully everyone else did as well. Uh, no problems. And, and Thank you. <laughs> forward to seeing everyone else next time. See you guys.